Joe Tunney here at Toyota of Seattle and Honda of Seattle here in downtown Seattle alongside the stadiums in downtown Seattle at large. They call this area the Soto District or south of downtown. Taking a look at uh, beautiful Scion FRS, we actually carry three brands here, Honda, Toyota, and Scion. And what's nice about this particular Scion is the first one that we've ever had that certified is under $20,000. And that's a pretty exciting price point to get into for somebody looking for a lot of bang for their buck and they don't want to spend a lot of bucks or they don't want a hefty monthly payment, but they want something with lots of warranty. This is a great, great choice. Also, it's a six-speed manual transmission, which to my way of thinking is an absolute necessity on this nice car. Miles in the 20s, price under 20, a great choice. Now, a lot of people ask the same question about the FRS. I'm sure uh, you've probably seen it asked online a lot. They have two badges on the two fenders that are a little bit difficult to decipher. What exactly do they mean? They look like some kind of uh, ornate belt buckle, and it looks like it could be uh, the number 86 in there. And you'll hear the term Hochi Roku mentioned, and that is the number 86, and that is exactly what this means. In fact, around the world, this car is called the 86. And then these two guys right here are pistons going sideways. When pistons go sideways like this, they come out like this, like a boxer punching, and then they call that kind of engine a boxer engine. A lot of people confuse it with the Porsche Boxster, and they call it a Boxster engine, but that's not what it means. It means boxer, like a pugilist kind of boxer. In fact, I'm gonna pop the hood. We're gonna take a look at that motor. It's a two liter engine, so that means it has 2,000 cc's of displacement. This one literally has 1,998 cc's of displacement. And then again, it's flat. It's completely flat. And so two pistons are going one way and two pistons are going the other way. And so the uh, Subaru BRZ is uh, essentially the clone to the uh, Scion FRS. The only difference between the two is that the Scion's the sportier of the two in that it has a firmer, lower type of suspension. And so the, uh, the center of gravity on this car is lower than even like the Mitsubishi Evolution. I mean, it's really, really low. And so as a result, it can be a little bit of a rough ride. The Subaru suspension is just a little cushier than the Scion's, which is a little rougher, but that's what people like in a car like this. In fact, the number 86, one of the things that that references is when you drift this car, that's the number that it makes essentially. That's the look of the drift. It looks exactly like that 86, and that's part of where that number comes from. This engine puts out 200 horsepower, 151 pound-feet of torque. So like a lot of small uh, displacement four-cylinder engines with good horsepower numbers, they typically have lower uh, torque numbers, and that's where you really benefit from getting a manual transmission. Not that this car is slow in an automatic transmission. It's a tiny car with 200 horsepower. It'll always be fast. There's no way to make it anything but fast. It's just more responsive, more satisfying, more electrifying, really, with a manual shift. However, manual shifts upon the way of the dodo bird, and although I love them, you can't even buy a Ferrari or a Lamborghini these days with a manual shift. Everything is automatic or some form of electronic clutch where you actually don't, uh, you're not the one doing all of the shifting. I vastly prefer being able to shift the car. Taking a look around, beautiful wheels, beautiful lines. Uh, one of the things uh, people forget is that uh, they forget that high performance cars were coming out of Japan for decades before they were available in the United States. And so the uh, Toyota's 2000, uh, going all the way back to uh, the late 60s, early 70s, it looks quite a lot like this. And the uh, is a car that's a you know quarter million type dollar holy grail collectible. Uh, Toyota's made a, a wide variety, actually, of high-performance cars over the years. They just haven't sold them in the United States. This is a, a pretty neat car. Not very big, but uh, big on performance. And big on comfort, too. It's actually really comfortable inside. These seats aren't a fancy brand name like Recaro or something like that, but the, uh, they sure feel fancy. They, the bolsters are quite firm super supportive. I'm six foot, 175 pounds. 
And even though I think the steering wheel is just a wee bit small, it's about a 14 inch steering wheel, it's the smallest steering wheel in uh, Toyota's entire lineup when we make some pretty small cars. But the uh, it's still quite comfortable. And despite the small steering wheel, the gauges are extremely legible. It's really easy to see, you know, the, it shows you a 9,000 RPM uh, tachometer, 160 mile an hour speedometer. Those numbers might be a little ambitious stock, but the, uh, you know, I can still see everything very easily. It's got that ring system where you have to pull up on the ring like some cars to get it to go into uh, reverse. Otherwise, it's just a standard six-speed manual and e-brake. Plain stereo. I'm not a giant fan of the stereo, but the, uh, you know, the small car, you don't need too much stereo. Speaking of small, I've seen bigger trucks than this, that's for sure. But again, this is a high-performance, on-a-budget single person's type of car, fun commuter, super duper fun daily driver, not a family vacation car, not going for a two week uh, supply of uh, goods at Costco kind of run. It's not that kind of car. Although you do have the folding rear seat, so if you need some space in a pinch, you can certainly make it happen. One thing you want to look at on these FRSs is they get uh, less and less expensive. They're more and more vulnerable to having been in accidents. And so you need to look for these VIN stickers, uh, the VIN uh, vehicle identification number. You got to imagine when these cars are at the factory, uh, they don't just pick any old trunk lid and put it on the car. They know this trunk lid's going for this car and it has this VIN number on it. However, they have to make parts available for the car long after the car sells new. And so you'll have a bunch of uh, trunk lids, hoods, doors, and that sort of thing. And they don't know what car that they're going to, so they don't have a VIN number on them. So whenever you see a panel that doesn't have a VIN number, you know that's a replacement panel. And there's only one reason, for the most part, that you replace panels. And that's because the car's been wrecked. We've become too uh, reliant on things like Carfax and less reliant on just our own eyeballs and touching the feel for paint lines and that sort of thing. But this is a dead giveaway if it's missing its VIN sticker that you've got a problem. Taking a look at the passenger side, again, a super, super stylish car, a very reminiscent of that old 2000, 2000 GT they used to call it. And uh, again, miles in the 20s and price under 20,000. Heck, you could do a lot worse than this. Let's turn it on and see how it sounds. So it's got a little bit of a throaty exhaust. You see these uh, exhaust systems pretty regularly replaced with something a little bit more lively. That would probably be my first choice in personalization. I think a, a more aggressive exhaust system would be just about right in this car. Otherwise, it's great stock. I mean, it's a great car. There's nothing negative you can really say about it. It doesn't cost a lot of money. From here, the resale value is going to be sky high compared to anything else. In fact, you can almost consider this an economy car in that you figure even several years from now, this car is probably still going to be worth well over $10,000. You're not going to find too many economy cars. You're not going to find too many cars of any kind that are going to depreciate from here to there with such a small me uh, measure of depreciation per month. A thrilling car. It's actually fairly economical. Of course, it's a four-cylinder Japanese car that doesn't move out of the way. The, uh, a neat car. If you never had a chance to drive an FRS, you'll find out in about two seconds why they're so popular with drifters. They really explode around turns. The uh, with uh, a lot of gas supply, and it's a very, very fun driving experience. If you have any questions about this FRS or anything that was